When Senator Elizabeth Warren delivered a speech at a campaign event in Atlanta last November, charter school supporters showed up to make their voices heard. Sarah Carpenter, a grandmother and school choice activist who had traveled six hours from Memphis to attend the event, confronted Warren backstage. It's because I read that your children went to private school. No, my children went to public school. That clip went viral because Warren wasn't telling the truth. Three weeks earlier, an education researcher named Corey DeAngelis had discovered through online sleuthing that her son Alex Warren, now 43, had attended Kirby Hall, an elite private school in Austin. DeAngelis, who is the director of school choice at the Reason Foundation, the nonprofit that publishes Reason TV, decided to research the issue because Warren wasn't forthcoming with reporters. A few journalists actually asked all the Democratic presidential candidates where they sent their own kids to school and where they went to school, just as some descriptive you know, analysis and reporting, which is very interesting. And going through that, I saw that Elizabeth Warren did, did respond to their email and said that she went to public schools in Oklahoma but the campaign said no response on the question of where she sent her own kids to schools. So I started thinking a little bit, you know, if she's so public school proud and that she's bragging about how she went to public schools and how she taught at public schools, she'd probably be really proud to talk about how she sent her own kids to public schools if that was actually the case. After DeAngelis found Alex Warren's Kirby Hall yearbook photo, others dug up evidence that he had also attended the Haverford School in Pennsylvania. In a statement, the Warren campaign later clarified that Elizabeth's daughter went to public school and her son went to public school until fifth grade. What's her set of policies towards school choice? Um, are they positive or negative? So in October, she released her education plan, and a lot of people were actually surprised that she was pretty radically anti-school choice, even more so than Bernie Sanders, some might argue. She called to eliminate all federal funding for new public charter schools. She called to make it more difficult to start new uh, public charter schools. She called for more regulations in general. Of, of public charter schools, but then also called to, end quote, end uh, tax credit scholarship programs and voucher programs in the United States. And we have about 60 or so private school choice programs in the U.S. right now. When asked about sending his kids to private school, a former Obama chief of staff and Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel told an interviewer, my children are not in a public position. What I do as a father is separate from what I do as a public official. Is that wrong? Yeah, I don't think you can separate the two, especially when you're living by one set of rules for yourself and then imposing a different set of rules for the rest of the population. That is, by definition, hypocrisy. So no no politician, as far as I know, is really coming out and saying, we, we need to ban private education. They're kind of, I mean, yes, they're hypocritical, but they're kind of saying, look, if I can afford to go to private school and, uh, you know, so I'm exercising my option, we're providing public schools for people and, you know, people should just go there. Like, why why is it wrong to oppose school choice that uses taxpayer dollars to allow people to go to either charter schools or private schools? Yeah, th this really comes into the logical inconsistencies of their arguments. The politicians that tend to come out against private school choice tend to be on the left. So like Elizabeth Warren, for example, calls to expand spending on for Pell Grants, for example, and Pell Grants and GI Bill. They allow uh, different segments of the community to take public dollars to go to a public or private university of choice, a religious or non-religious university of choice. So there's a huge inconsistency here. And this is also the same with universal pre-K proposals. If you want to, if you're pushing to expand free universal pre-K proposals, those allow families to use public and private options as well. Why is it any different when you get, you know, between pre-K and college? Why is it any different between K to 12? Seems uh, pretty inconsistent to me. Bernie Sanders is particularly vehement against uh, school choice, especially uh, public charter schools. Where did his kids go to school? Uh, we don't have this information yet. Education Week asked the Bernie Sanders campaign where he sent his kids, but uh, the Bernie Sanders uh, campaign did not respond where he sent all of his children. Buddha Judge uh, himself went to private schools and colleges. He's against private scholarship voucher programs, which is interesting given where his husband works, as you found out. Uh, can you explain that? Yeah, so Pete Buttigieg's husband works at a private Montessori school in, in Indiana. And also what's interesting about this is that that particular private school in Indiana also accepts tax credit scholarships from the state's uh, private school choice program. So his husband benefits in some way, or he at least works at a school 
that accepts these kind of scholarships that help low-income students attend his husband's school, which is a great thing, but he has come out against private school choice programs. What's an example of another politician who's anti-choice but sends his kids to private schools? Yeah, I recently found out that the governor of North Carolina, Roy Cooper, he sent his own child to a very expensive private school in, in North Carolina, and they actually graduated from a high school out there. But at the same time, he opposes the state's Opportunity Scholarships Program, which is a private school voucher program which allows low-income students to attend private schools in the state. So I have a video of him on my Twitter feed uh, just pointing out how he has come out against the private school voucher program in, in, uh, in North Carolina. And he also made a false claim in that video as well. He said something along the lines of, we don't know how these kids are doing in these private schools, but that's not actually true. The, that particular program requires the schools to report standardized testing results for these kids and also required to, to, to report on graduation rates for these kids as well. Are you optimistic that publicly funded um, choice programs are going to grow or are they going to be kind of crushed under heel? I have a, a quite a bit of optimism, uh, I, but at least I'll, at first I'll start off with where I'm a little skeptical. We've had the private school choice movement for a very long time in the U.S., uh, we've had uh, town tuitioning programs in Maine and Vermont since the late 1800s, which most people don't talk about. But most people uh, talk about the beginning of the school choice movement, private school choice movement in the U.S. with the 1990 Milwaukee Parental Choice Program. And so and over the last three decades, we still only have around 600,000 students using private school choice programs today, and that's about a half of a percent of the school age population. So we've been around a long time. It hasn't gotten to that escape velocity yet, but I think at one point, we're going to have enough parents become the new special interest in the education movement because once parents get choice for their children, they fight really hard to keep that option for their child because they're overwhelmingly satisfied uh, with being able to send their kids to the schools of their choice. And the more powerful interest group is going to be those parents fighting to choose those schools for their kids in opposition to the teachers unions.